G'day, and welcome to today's Bottom Up Boats splicing episode, where we're going to show you how to put two eye splices, each with a thimble, into a piece of Dyneema. For today's video, we'll need a couple of meters of Dyneema, two thimbles, your D splicer, a pair of scissors, a couple of standard fids, and a piece of tape. As per always, if you need any of this equipment, please be sure to pick it up by using the product links in the description below. You want to start your first splice by taking the working end and putting a bite in it about one and a half fid lengths in length. Then you take your thimble, place it in the bite, loosen up the Dyneema, and then pass your fid through where the end of the fid thimble is. You want to make sure you have equal threads on either side of your fid. And you take the working end, put it in to the fid, and pull it through to complete the first part of the Brummel locking splice. As we've only got a short end, you now want to take your fid, once again, loosen up the Dyneema, put it through the middle, making sure that there's equal threads on each side. Then you want to take the standing end, put it into your fid, and then pull it through to complete the simple Brummel locking splice. At this point, the thimble is locked into place. And now what you need to do is bury the tail into the standing end. The best tool to do this is the de-splicer. You want to make a hole a couple of inches past where the working end is sitting. Move it all the way up as close to the Brummel splice as you can, and then pop it out the end. Open up your de-splicer, put the working end in it, and then Slowly work the end all the way through. At this point, you want to scrunch up the Dyneema on the standing end, pulling out the working end, and then just insert the smallest fid you've got to hold it in place. Disconnect the de-splicer, and then starting at the fid, you want to grab every second or third strand and pull out the Dyneema. Once we've pulled them out all the way along, we will grab our scissors and cut these off. This is an important step in your splice because tapering the buried working end creates for a smooth transition and doesn't leave any bumps in your splice when you're finished. So with all the threads pulled out, get your shears. Once again, you can get them in the product descriptions below. It's great to have a sharp pair of Kevlar cutting shears, especially for the modern Dyneema rope that can be pretty hard to touch with standard scissors. One final 45 degree taper at the end, and then you're right to remove your fid, work the scrunched up outer core over the inner to bury the splice. And there you have it, the Dyneema eye splice with a thimble completed with a free standing end. To complete the second splice with a thimble, we're going to need a different technique as we will not be able to put the thimble from the standing end through the Dyneema to complete our Brummel splice. So the second way is started in a similar fashion to the first. You get about 1.5 fid lengths and the working end and then put a bite into your line. The second step after creating the bite is to grab a piece of tape and wrap it around the working end and we're going to use this as a marker point for where we complete our splice after aligning the thimble. Then take your thimble, line it up with the mark that you've made, 
Then we're going to take our fid and we want to put it through the standing end just past where it comes out from the thimble. For this one, it may pay to just be a couple further threads down due to the tight way you make the splice. So once again, loosen up the Dyneema, fid through the standing end, making sure equal strands on each side of the fid. And then you want to pull through your tape mark and create a loop. And this is the first part of the eye splice. The second step is to once again take your fid, and this time right where the end of the tape is, closest to the standing end, once again come through. And the idea here is to create a second loop that mirrors the first. Once you have these two mirror loops in place, you're going to take the working end and pull it through, pulling the tape through the hole that you created and putting a twist into the rope. You then want to take your fid and widen out the hole, the second hole that you put in place. You're going to put the first loop in through that hole. So it's going to need to be a little bit wider to achieve this. So what you need to do is grab bigger fid and slowly work out the size of the hole, making sure that you don't catch or rip or pull any of the threads. Then we're going to repeat one last time with our largest fit. Once again, being very careful not to catch any. And then as you pull it through, you want to take the first loop, whack it into the end of the fit, and then slowly ease it through. And then as you pull it through, you effectively undo the twist that you put in by pulling the tape through in step two. And then if you tease out the eye, you have effectively completed your Blummel locking spice. Now all we need to do is remove the tape and then widen out the eye of your Brummel locked splice to enable the thimble to slot in. It's best to start at the bottom of the thimble and then just slowly tease it up to the top, pivoting it over and locking it into place. So there you've almost completed the splice. We've got it locked in, the thimble's tight, normalize both the standing and working ends. And then the final step, as with the first, is to take your D splicer starting a couple of inches up past where the working end is in the standing end, slide it all the way through, bringing it out as close to the top of the splice as possible. Taking the working end, slotting it in the end of your D slicer, and then pulling it all the way through. Then giving the working end a tug, taking your smallest fid, sliding it through to lock it in place so that we can complete that all important taper. Grabbing the threads close to the fid that's holding it in place, pulling one out every couple of inches, every couple of threads that is, and then taking your shears and snipping them off. Once again, if you need any of the equipment used in today's videos, please use the product links in the description below. It really helps small channels like ours if you do this. With all the threads cut off and then a nice 45 degree put at the end, it's a simple matter of removing the smallest fid you place to hold it in place, sliding it down and burying the working end in the standing end. And there you have our second thimbled eye splice, this time completed with one end fixed and the first completed without it.
We hope you enjoyed today's video. We showed you how to do the Dyneema eye splice two ways with thimbles. If this video was a little quick for you, why not check out our two full length videos where we show you the eye splice with one end fixed and then a second version without it. If you liked today's video, don't forget to subscribe to our channel to get all the updates as soon as they're released.